I'm Go. Bobby Walker with Journey of a New Entrepreneur, and I've got one message for you. Don't be a bitch! 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 What is going on, everybody? It's Bobby Walker here, coming back to you with the Journey of a New Entrepreneur podcast. Today, I've got a good friend of mine. I've been through the mountains with this dude, Brant Thurgood. You're going to love him. And, and here's how I know is he's just a lovable guy. Like I've talked about good huggers in the past. Keith Kalfas is up there with being a good hugger. Brant Thurgood is a hugging machine and I love it. And Brant, I don't even know if you like it. I just like your hugs, bro. Maybe you're not a touchy feely dude, but you know, enter at your own risk people. He's a big dude. Don't mess with him. But I love this guy. He's become a dear friend of mine and I can't wait to dig into what he's uh, been doing. And Brant, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to throw a little bit of pressure on you. We didn't talk about this. I know you love them because I know you use them. You've, you've heard of this company. They're the, the sponsor of my show. They're called Jill's Office. Or Jill's Office. You're Jill's Office. The, this I other company. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get to be a free sponsor, Brant. Um, <laughs> but Responsibit, all right? So everyone knows that Responsibit is, has been a software platform that I've used in my company for probably four years now. I don't even, I don't know exactly. Uh, well, heck, I, I signed up in 2017. So you do the math. I, you know, signed up in uh, August of 2017, I think it was. Been do, using it ever since. It's been phenomenal for us. And and here's what Responsibit is, guys. It's an automation uh, sales platform. It doesn't generate leads for you, but it helps you close leads. And it helps you do them with less effort, at higher average ticket prices. And um, I don't know, it just makes life kind of easy. So it can do all kinds of stuff. I use it when we're out selling in the field in person. We use it if we're selling over the phone because we do both of those things. And we've even used it on our website where people can go get their own quotes. But Brant actually runs, now it's not a call center, uh, just for the record, it's not a call center, but uh, he runs the Not A Call Center, Jill's office over here, him and his wife, and they started this thing and they're just kicking ass at it. But you guys use it. So like people can literally, so so this is such a great opportunity for this great commercial. So Brant, we're going to keep it short because I'm already like 20 minutes into to the commercial here. But you run this not a call center where people can call in your people, your Jill's over there at Jill's office are going to answer the phones for uh, for their, for, you know, my client or who the listener's client. Yeah. And not only, they don't just take messages, but they can actually like give accurate quotes and stuff like that, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we're, we go into, you know, uh, software is like Responsibit, and we definitely love Responsibit. We can go through, you know, especially with Responsibit, we go through that call screen that's on there. Uh, we go through and we we can ask all those questions that you have in there and be able to give, like, for example, the good, better, best option. And mm -hmm. we're going through that with the client, you know, as if we were sitting in your office. Um, and from there, you know, we use the most amazing uh, software, CrewCal, yep. which makes 10 times easier for our Jills to schedule. Bam, it's scheduled. And guess what? You didn't have to lift a finger. We did it for you and you're making money. Yeah, it's it's awesome. So guys, th that's the beauty. Here's the thing. Spoiler alert. Responsibit is not short, fast, and sweet to set up because it's a very powerful tool and there's a lot of knobs to turn and a lot of dials and switches. But here's the beauty is once you do that work and you get it set up with all the little intricacies about your company and how you like things quoted, um, once it's set up, it's easy. People can get their own. And even people halfway across the country at Jill's office, they take the call. They act like they're one of your people. You know, they say, this is, you know, Jill with, with XYZ, you know, services, whoever you are, and can give the quote, use the script that you want, give them the options, close the deal. You have, you never even took the call. And, and so it's just awesome. Response bid, go to J N E bid.com. That's the best deal you can get. For journey of a new entrepreneur, well, for anyone, if but it's for journey of a new entrepreneur listeners, J N E bid.com. And not only can it help you on your own, but it can help you with Jill's office. It'll grow with you just like Jill's office grows with you. So I'm going to throw a free commercial in with them. Responsibility and Jill's office is both great. When I was young and dumb and didn't know what I was doing, I use responsibility to do all my quotes just over the phone. And I use Jill's office to take all the calls. When I grew a little bit, responsibility changed. We started doing our quotes in person and Jill's office turned into our overflow. These are two services that grow with your company. They grow with you. They're super awesome. Check them out. Go to jnejills.com. That doesn't exist yet, but Brent, we better fix that. But check yeah. out jillsoffice.com, right? That's where we would go, yeah. jillsoffice.com. Check them out too. So, But anyway, we got Brent here. He's become a good buddy of mine. How the hell are you, man? Dude, I'm good. I'm. It's a great morning. It's Wednesday. 
Yeah, well, morning. Yeah, you're over there on the on the West Coast time. You know, you yeah, you guys always late to the party. Us East Coasters, we get the short end of the stick. We got to wake up early. We got to stay up later to watch the football games. Don't even get me started on UFC events. You you East or you you West Coasters get all the luck over there. But uh, and I say the coast. You're in Utah. That's that's close enough, right? Yeah, yeah. We I mean we I'm in Utah. We got like this Salt Lake here, you know. So yeah, we got okay. our own little ocean. Yeah, you got a little coast over there. That's cool. So, um, and Brant. Here's the thing. I almost did not do a video show with you. I don't like having people on that have superior beards over me. And um, you, my friend, have one of the greatest beards in the industry, I've got to say. You know, I'm just trying to model after you. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> so, so, man, let's get into it, my friend. Um, you know, we we can't just do inside jokes all day because I'd love to. But, but the people out there may not know you. So we've already told them that you're a part of, uh, you're one of the founders, you and your wife, you know, started Jill's office and, and run this thing to this day. Um, but, but who is Brant, you know, outside of Jill's? Give us the little update on, you know, the long walks on the beach, the how many, how many ducks would you beat with a horse-sized chicken and all that good stuff, you know? Yeah, no, you know, I'm Brant. I'm, I'm born and raised here in Utah, um, married to a wonderful woman, Autumn, who's, you know, 10 times better than me. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we got... Two little kids, uh, full of energy. If uh, you know, you ever see me with my kids, it's probably me chasing after them. They never stand still. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, outside of work, I mean, long walks on the beach. I love to smoke meat. Like, okay, I knew we I were friends for a reason. That's right. Yeah, I, I, you know, I get my Traeger out every weekend and you know throw something on there, and you know we have the you know little bounce houses for the kids in the back, and That's you know. Awesome enjoy enjoy our family time smoking some meat slowing down enjoying life so for all all of the meat masters out there okay um i, I don't know if that's a real word and oh, it probably is it just might not be what i think i don't who knows but for all the meat masters out there they they want to know brant what's your specialty on the traeger because they're going to judge you hard you know so like is it like i i don't know i'm not i'm not one of these dudes but yeah but what's your specialty? I want other everyone that hears this to sound off in the comments wherever you see this thing. Let me know if Brant really knows his stuff based on his answer here. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, you know, here's what I've been doing a lot this this year of, is a lot of tacos. Okay. Uh, I've been smoking a lot of meat and making a lot of tacos. So, like, uh, you know, I've been making a lot of uh, pork belly chorizo tacos or mm. pulled pork mango habanero uh, taco. Okay. Um, I do a lot of pulled pork. I'm really good with pulled pork, you know, smoking it different ways. I'm not the best at ribs. I don't know why, you know, How about brisket. Can you do a mean brisket? I can do a mean brisket actually. Can, okay. So here's the deal, Brant next yeah. time. Cause there needs to be a next time I come okay. out to Utah and see you guys. Uh, how about some brisk smoked brisket tacos? Yeah. And then, Eat. and then we'll just double it and then we'll do that for dinner. And then I'll come back for breakfast in the morning and we'll do barbecue brisket burritos with the leftovers and we'll just be the best Dude, of friends. Done. All that, right. <laughs> that sounds like, that sounds good. I haven't had breakfast yet. Now I'm starving. Okay. Let's, let's go finish this. Up. <laughs> love it. Love it. So Brant, uh, you know, you, you kind of got the same story. A lot of us do, you know, you're very, uh, I think in a healthy way, uh, at least from the outside looking in, it looks healthy. Uh, you're very healthily uh, consumed with your businesses, I think, you know, and the reason I say that is um, as your friend, I know you have a, a great focus on your family and the things that are important. Um, but I don't think there's anything wrong. Like, as a matter of fact, I would argue it's a great thing if your business is also your hobby, right? How, how great is that? And I don't know if you look at Jill's like your hobby, but you, one thing I know for a fact is you look at it with a great deal of pride and, and, and you get a great deal of fulfillment um, yeah. taking care of that. Um <laughs> how the heck did this thing even start? So let, let's just jump into this journey of a new entrepreneur thing. Yeah. And by the way, for the critics out there, Bobby, you're not a new entrepreneur anymore. Folks, if you ain't learning every day, you're an old entrepreneur. I'm learning every day. So I'm a new one every day. You should be too. So Brant, what got you into Jill's office? Was that the first venture or was there something, you know, were there some successes or failures prior to that on the entrepreneurial side that then led to Jill's? Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, so I was actually working at a call center um, mm -hmm. in in Salt Lake City here, uh, you know, doing, you know, uh, short term loans for, um, you know, home renovations mm -hmm. and um, going to school. Uh, you know, I was going to school for sales here at our local college here at Weber State. And, you know, my family is full of entrepreneurs, you know, 
Um, all my aunts and uncles are entrepreneurs. I mean, my father's an entrepreneur who owned a tech company. You know, my brother is. And I, one time I was driving in the uh, in the car with my brother and uh, his phone rang. I'm like, dude, you going to answer that? He's like, no. <laughs> if they want my business, they can leave a voicemail. I'll call him back. And I'm like. Ah. <laughs> Famous last words. <laughs> like, my mind was blown, you know? Mm -hmm. And I hated my job working in a call center. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I'm like, hey my dad had just sold his business. Like dad, I got this idea. Let's start a call center that doesn't suck. Nice. Number one. And let's answer phones for the people who can't like my, my uncles and my brother. And we kind of just based the whole business around them and, you know, presented it to him and that bada bing, bada boom. That's how it all kind of started is just that, that one idea, um, you know, and we and just how start long ago was that? I was in 2013. Okay, nice. And so less than 10 years later, uh, tell us, you know, I always like to kind of fast forward and then we'll get back to the good stuff. Cause I know currently we're in good, you know, things are bright and beautiful and happy. Maybe yeah. there may not be some things. So let's give the guys the spoiler alert. What's Jill's like today? You know, what, what, what have you accomplished and achieved with this? And, and if you were going to, yeah. if you had 90 seconds to, to three minutes to share what you're most proud of about Jill's, what would that be? Yeah. You know, Jill's office, we've definitely grown. We've learned a lot. We're, we're learning company every day. Um, just as entrepreneurs learn, uh, we, on, well, entrepreneurs learn, we learn, right. Mm -hmm. That business yeah. owners, these business owners, you guys, Hey, let's do this. Let's try this, you know? And so we're, we're, we're growing with a lot of you and we're learning and, and we are adapting uh, to the changing world of the home service industry and, you know, doing a lot of training, you know, we, we went from four employees to now we have um, over 120 wow. uh, over two different call centers here in the state of Utah. Um, you know, we don't outsource. We're just here locally um, in Utah. And, you know, we really, we really focus on, you know, how can we help the entrepreneur be successful by booking, having great customer service and really taking care of their customers. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's, that's our main job is how can we help, you know, business owners effectively communicate with their clients mm -hmm. um, and, and, and in any ways possible that we can do. And so, you know, that's kind of what we are here at Jill's office. And, you know, we're really just working on those tools, especially we have some, you know, new tools coming out from a tech standpoint to where we are working on, you know, our call screen and all this. The cool thing about Jill's office is we have in-house programmers where, okay, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs are doing it this way. So it's like, we actually go in and change our whole call flow yeah. to be able to help, you know, the, the Jill's be able to be more effective on the phone and, you know, different things like that. So, you know, it, it's a, it's a really cool thing what we've adapted to, because it's just like, we're, we're growing with every single one of you entrepreneurs, as you guys are getting smarter, you know, we're trying to get smarter with you. I so. love it. And, and listen, uh, one thing, because everyone, well, I guess everyone may not know, but I got to go out to Jill's. It was actually um, just a little over a year ago. It was, uh, I, don't, I don't know. I, bet, July. I think it was a year ago in August. In wow. all, yeah, maybe August. I was going to say July, August, somewhere in there. And I had the opportunity. Thank you, Josh Latimer. He had to pull out. He was supposed to speak at your thing and, and he couldn't make it. So I got to go in his place and it was one of my greatest experiences, uh, you know, getting to, uh, you know, pursue my my public speaking thing i got to come and speak at your uh your uh, jill con is what you call it you had all the jills in there which by the way if any of the jills hear this you guys are freaking awesome i had a blast with you all um you know you're all great except for caitlin um she needs to go i don't know what's up with her brant so uh <laughs> if you get rid of kate i'll come back and, and use jill's office again but all the rest of you are amazing and here's what i love the best about your crew brant is i am the reigning jill's office the office trivia champion you've you've got some jills over there that think they know the office trivia you know the the television show the office but every time i come around or get together with them at a an event i just smoke them and that's the truth right i mean you can verify hey, that from know, the audience right it's true it's true but i mean i sp i swear they spend half the time trying to you know learn the office at home <laughs> <laughs> they can smoke you every time they see you. I, I'm just saying they're trying to get better and better every time. Well, they, they need to step up their game, ladies, because I'm coming for you next time. So, but, but anyway, I, I came down, I got to visit the location and 
Now, guys, I, I just want to say this, and I've said this in, in a few episodes lately. That this is not an advertisement. This is just truth. Like, Brant, did, I didn't say, hey, Brant, come on the show and let's advertise Jill's office. He just happens to have a service that uh, serves our industry, and the fact is, it's pretty damn good. And you know what, Brant? I've been using you for a long time. I've had some amazing experiences. There's been a couple of drop balls here and there, you know, things that, that mess up. Just like yeah. with my company, I just had to buy a ceiling fan because we ruined a ceiling fan on someone's, you know, back patio the other day. You know, stuff happens, but you guys provide a phenomenal, consistent experience. You're humans. And here's why I bring up the fact that, yeah, you know, shit's happened before. Um, and when it does, uh, or, you know, I say when it does, when it did, um, you guys were Johnny on the spot. You know, you jump in, you, you, you address it, you find out what was going on, you fix it, and it doesn't happen anymore. And I love it. So, um, and the fact that you have like the in-house coders, you know, I don't know if that's the the term, you, you know, you use for them, but the programmers or whatever, you know, I got to go hang out with one of them. Uh, we had lunch or dinner with one of them. And I'm just like, this is cool. Just for that reason is you guys can adapt on the fly. You're very nimble. Even though you're becoming bigger, you're still very, very nimble in, in how you guys do stuff. Um, yeah. And what I was saying to the listeners about the commercial is, here's what I want you to really hear about this trip that I made to Jill's. And this is what you're going to be able to learn from Brant is uh, at least one thing Brant is culture. I was really impressed. Um, you guys can actually go, uh, if you go hunt down on some of my YouTube videos, you can actually see when I toured the Jill's office office over there, at least the big one, I think, because uh, it's, I think the other one's the satellite, maybe, I don't know, but yeah, it's in Southern um, Utah. yeah but um, one thing I loved is, you know, you walk in, your core values are right on the wall, you know, and you guys were beaming with pride. Like these are the things that uh, are important to us and what we strive for. You walked around. I don't remember what you call it, but you have like a bucket of goodies over there. You know, and it's just like any time a Jill, you know, delivers a wow experience, they get to, you know, ring the bell and go get a treat, you know, so to speak. You know, if you the will. Wow and, yeah, the wow do. button is that what it is? Okay, they they ring the well bat wow button, and I think that's like Pavlov's dog, right? Every time that button goes off, they start salivating, and they're just ready to deliver more wow experiences, which is exciting, but. Um, you know, I adopted some stuff from you guys, you know, I, I got the bookshelf in place, you know, cause you know, I'm a book reader and getting my team to read and, and you guys have these books that, that help people exemplify, you know, your core values and, and, and get to the places that they want in life. And, and then there's things that I want you to share about, like just things you do for them on the personal side and some, and I don't even know if you can, well, I probably know some stuff maybe I'm not supposed to know, but all kinds of cool things that you guys are doing, but, but it's company culture. So, Brant, let's dig into that for a minute. You know, you, you started the business. I guess we kind of skipped some stuff. You started it way back when to help your mom and dad, or help, not to help them, but with them on the idea, serve your brother's businesses. Overnight, you're a success, you know, t almost 10 years later. You had no hard problems, I'm sure. No. Um, and we'll get back into those, but, but let's talk about culture. It's so clear. It's so evident that that's the driving force behind yeah. your company. Every time I'm me or even my team, when we were at the huge convention, seeing your people, they're like, oh my gosh, these guys are amazing. What's the secret, man? What the heck are you doing to get your people that not only have great attitudes for their, for your customers, but they seem to genuinely really like each other, except for that Caitlin. She's the only one that, that no one seems to like over there, but except for her, what is it about everyone that, that what is your, your secret to culture? Yeah, you know, here here's here's my thought to that is is culture is so important, especially in a place when I said I wanted to start a call center that wasn't like a call center, that's what culture is so important. But I think it can translate to, to any industry. And that's mm -hmm. you know, and I think uh two different things. Number one is I've delegated to that someone who's better than me who can understand culture. Um, you know, yeah. I, I I feel like I'm okay at it. Um, but I have people who are more in the trenches and who can understand that better than me. So having someone in the part of the team who's our culture expert, and that's that's who Nicole is here at Jill's office. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we do surveys with like, you know, monthly surveys. Um, how are things going? How are you feeling? We're, so we're, we're really communicating with our employees to understand their needs, um, you know, and really understanding how we can uh, better assist them. So for example, one thing we really wanted to do this year um, you know, to, to better help our benefits is we said, okay, what are you struggling with? Um, and how can we help you? And so we're just like, you know, give us an idea. So a lot of things were mental health or groceries or gas, you know? And so it's just like, you know, I get those things, you know, we, we kind of all, you know, especially in this day of, of 
recession, you know, we all have those things. And so it's just like, okay, what can we do as a company mm-hmm. to help with that? So we use automate motivate in Jill's office. I do uh, too. We, uh, we uh, love it. We love it. <laughs> yeah. Same thing here. And so mm-hmm. it's like, I went, uh, we changed one of our things is we did, um, hundred dollar, um, you know, um, what hundred dollar grocery cards that you could get for like $60 worth of points. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, you know, go, go work harder. And then you can get a hundred dollar, you know, grocery card for, for 60 bucks, That's and, you know, and then we started the better health, um, mm-hmm. you know, program where it's like, people can, you know, get mental health and we pay for the first two months. And then, you know, so talk about just, that for a second. I, I've been, we don't have to go down. We, we can, but we don't got to go deep on the mental health. Cause I've had a, a handful of episodes lately that, that have, but, yeah. well, but I, let's take a second brand, at least so people that are listening know what the heck that is because yeah. maybe they can use it too so what's better help and why are you doing that with your with your uh, your employees your teammates there so better help is an online counseling platform uh, where you can you know reach out and talk to a counselor um, and you know set up those appointments that you know it's like you can be in the comfort of your own home um, and you know away from where you wherever you need to be to be comfortable and and to really speak to someone who can help you through things yeah and the the cool thing about that from an employer standpoint i don't need to know Mm -hmm. when you're talking what you're talking about i don't even i just i just pay for it right i just need to know how many employees sign up for it i don't need to know who the employee is um and they're 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 getting the help you know they need the the interesting thing is 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 you know with when it comes to culture nowadays pay pays one thing um and I think, you know, we're in an age where, you know, people will chase the 25 cents, the 50 cents of pay. Mm-hmm. But I think when they understand that when their basic needs are paying are taken care of, even if you can't offer the most competitive pay, but if you can offer really competitive benefits that actually assist them, they see that you're actually trying to do so much more than just paying them. Paying them, mm-hmm. that's, you know, that's one thing. But when you're trying to go the extra step and help them actually live a better life and help them have a better like life experience you might not pay the best, yeah. but they'll have a better experience and they'll be there. They have a higher chance to stay. So, you know, and that's what, you know, this, this, like things like this better help, you know, really does is it, it gives them, you know, the, the, the satisfaction of, okay, I work at a place who cares about me. Yeah. And, you know, we might only be able to pay for two months because after that, but then they have the ability to, you know, to get on either a text platform or continue doing it till they feel better and just different yeah. things. Uh, but it's a start well hey, brant let me just i want to just uh, i'm getting better listeners and brant at interrupting i haven't solved the problem yet but this is a, a deliberate interruption i just want to uh pause pause that brant and just say you know to the listeners guys better help you've heard me talking about it you've heard me talking about mental health um uh, you know i went through hell uh <laughs> i went through hell and back and thought about staying in hell you know uh, it, you know things were so dark there for a while and uh, better help was the platform that i used you know uh, you guys have heard me tell the story kirk kempton locked me in a hotel room and you know made me sign up or he wasn't going to let me out type of thing and um i didn't want to do it because i thought oh i need a better therapist i need a real one in person i don't you know i don't want to do this you know half ass you know whatever and but you know what it's exactly what i needed and um it it again it i'm not making any you know crazy comments but probably saved my life guys and if you're if you're dealing with this stuff if you're dealing with anxiety if you're dealing with fear if you're dealing with depression all of those things go to betterhope.com and sign up it's like i don't know what is it like 110 bucks a session and that's if you there's even a button that says you know don't have money click here there's like opportunities for you to save some cash i don't know exactly how that works but go to betterhelp.com, sign up. It takes like five minutes to sign up. You get paired with a, a therapist. They have like 20,000 therapists and you can like pick anyone that you want. And the beauty of like, I picked one that I thought would be the total opposite of everything that they would probably think I am. I'm the big white middle-aged dude, bald head, ogre looking from, from the South. So I picked someone that um, I uh, don't know if they are honestly, but from the, you know, I thought that they, she was a lesbian. I thought she, you know, her thing said she was all about LGBTQ stuff and she, you know, which I'm all for equality just for the record folks. So I'm all for that, but I don't look the part. 
I'm that, that dude that doesn't look like that. So I thought I'm going to find someone that's probably not going to be on team Bobby just by generalities. That way, if they tell me some stuff that's good about me, I can believe them and know that they weren't just lying to try to <laughs> do me good. But my point is this is I picked a therapist that like worked for me because of the stuff that they worked on. Right. And you can too, you can get in there. If religion's important to you, you can get a religious therapist. If it's not important, you can get a non-religious therapist. If it's LGBTQ stuff, you can get a therapist for that. If it's, I'm a, I'm a stereotypical straight white male, you can get a therapist for that. Whatever your thing is, there's 20,000 of them you can choose from. And guys, I don't make money for this stuff. I'm just telling you, here's what, here's my benefit on pausing the show and talking about it is this stuff saved my life. And, it, and it's going to save someone's out there. So go to betterhelp.com. And then I'll tag on with Brant. And if you send your employees to stuff like that, their life is better. Their life's more fulfilling. And even though you paid for it, they're going to perform better for you. So it kills two birds with one stone. You're helping yeah. your people and they're going to be better for you. So Brant, I'm sorry, but I had to take that opportunity. So we're talking about culture. You're talking Hold about me, benefits. Let me, like- let, me throw, let me throw one more thought in there mm-hmm. along with that is a lot of time business owners don't feel like they're, yeah. they need someone. Um, and you know, business owners, especially entrepreneurs, um, and I went through a time of, of, of anxiety and extreme anxiety during my business when, you know, there was mm-hmm. crap happening and I wish I had a place to turn to, you know, and I, I kind of just dealt with it in different ways, but, you know, as business owners, we feel like we're invincible because we do stupid things and, you know, quit our jobs and, you know, start businesses. But at the same time, you know, they say that, that there's a lot of us a lot of business owners have anxiety and depression because of the things that we have to go through. The mental capacity is what we do. So don't feel like you're alone and it's okay to get help. Yeah. Good stuff, man. Here, here. Cheers. Amen. Ditto and all of the above. So speaking of mental health and speaking of taking care of our team, Let's keep talking about uh, culture, Brant. You've created uh, an amazing one. So I, I, I'm literally taking notes here. So what else have you done that's made your team be viciously loyal to, you know, the Jill's crew? Yeah. So, I mean, we just, we try to, here's the thing. I understand how expensive benefits can be. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I feel like we're trying to be very conscious to it, but it's like, what are some of the benefits that we can offer that are not traditional? Like mm-hmm. we offer we don't offer so basically paid birthdays you get your birthday off for free and we celebrate oh that. awesome it's uh you know so everyone gets to have their birthday off and go celebrate and get paid for it um man what else do we, we dude offer? i love that i'm a, yeah I, don't know, I love that idea paid birthday yeah. yeah um you know we really make sure that you know we offer our traditional health vision dental so we try to offer that i mean obviously before um, obviously we're above 50 employees. So we have to offer traditional healthcare, mm-hmm. um, which is very expensive. And I understand that, but there's other things, especially as small business owners, you think, man, I can't offer traditional healthcare, but <clears throat> there's other options out there that I used before that, that I really wish I could still use because it's better, but like, there's something called Q Sarah. It's yeah. qualified. Um, you, you told know, me about this. That's the only reason I know it. I'm like, it's actually on my list. <laughs> it's, yeah. Sorry for that interruption. I'm just like, yes, that's a good one. So, you know, so it's like what you do is you give a healthcare stipend and so they can go out and get healthcare and you give them a stipend for it. So it's just like, there's different things that you can do out there that don't cost a lot of money, but making sure that the employees feel, you know, you know, valued. Um, because like I said, pay, pays, pays just, you know, stepping stone, but making sure they feel valued is there. And then at the same time, um, <laughs> Brand, before we move on, just spell that. I was looking at my notes so I could, and I can't find it on the fly. How do you spell Qsera? Just for those that are saying, "Hey, uh, I'm ready to do this stuff." Uh, do you recall? Oh, he's got to search it too. Um, yeah, quality so television. It's folks. an acronym, so it's qualified. Um, let's see. Give me two seconds. Yeah, I'm sorry. This, this is worth it. Someone out there wants to know this, and I so it's Q S E H R A. Okay. That's what that is. And, and that, that can help you out. You know, you, uh, yeah, it helps you provide some better, uh, benefits to your employees without as much cost to the, to the business essentially. Yeah, exactly. I and see. so, um, so it's yeah, qualified, uh, small employer health reimbursement, um, program, basically that's what I it see. was. But, um, and so there's some other programs out there that are like that, um, that, you know, that's IRS approved and everything. And there's, there's companies you can go sign up for. That's very cheap. That manages all that. 
and take care of all the paperwork for the filing you have to do for the IRS for that. Nice. Um, and so that that's what that is. So um, yeah, jump on that. Um, but then at the same time, like to, to give, because we have a larger group of employees, even when we were smaller, we did this, but um, you know, we have uh, employee ran, you know, committees that focus on like health and wellness is one. Um, the other committee we have is service. Mm. And then the other um, program, uh, other community here we have is like fun and activities. And so every month uh, a committee is assigned to do something, you know, for, for the employees and there, we give them a budget for the year. And so like, for example, you know, the service committee, every winter we do, uh, we, what Jill's office goes out and buys a bunch of blankets and they get a tie blankets during the call, you know, mm. between calls and they do tie blankets or, um, I think like during Valentine's day, they do like, they make Valentine's cards for the children's hospital. Oh, wow. uh, so the health and wellness activity, like they did a health and wellness, a health, mental health and wellness, uh, bingo challenge where people got to go if they went on a hike or they watched a sunset or, you know, they went and tried a new like yoga class or, um, they signed up, we have, a, we offer a free gym membership here at Jill's office. So it's just like, did you sign up and go to the gym? So, mm -hmm. um, you know, so they, they play bingo and they gave away health prizes at the end of the month. Like, you know, I think they gave away water bottle and so nothing crazy, That's but cool. it was like something that like gets them, you know, active. And then like, now, how, how do you operate that Brant? So like, you've got, let's just, let's just run with the, um, the service, uh, committee, you know, so, which sounds like it's like, community service stuff right is that am i following you correctly so you know for someone saying hey that's a great freaking idea um do you literally just say all right here's the group and here's its purpose its purpose you know i'll pull it into a nutshell its purpose is to serve the community and we want you to do so many things a year and here's some money to do it with and then do you just yeah. let them run with it or how does that work no then i we so i have nicole my culture you know, mm -hmm. person she goes out to all employees and say, Hey, we need the person who wants to be in charge of this committee. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this doesn't take away from any work. Like this is just basically a volunteer thing. If you want to be involved in that's kind of like, Hey, you do this, you know, at home or something, this is something that makes you feel like that you're, they're empowered at the office. Mm -hmm. And so actually a lot of, you know, we give opportunities to our, some of our newer employees, but it's basically, Hey, who wants to be in charge of this for the next year? So they have a, you know, a person who's runs the committee. Um, if that, that's an, it's all employee ran, right. I just give them a budget and I make sure that it doesn't distract or deter from any of the things, but it's just like si simple stuff that helps people feel like they have something that they're, they're in charge of here at the office or, you know, doing. So it's like, you know, let's do a potluck this month. Okay. This committee's in charge. And then the, it's all mm -hmm. employee ran. So the employees run it, they, they set it up, they, they do it. And so we have three department, three heads and, you know, they have once one meeting every half hour. I mean, every, one meeting once a month for a half hour to saying, here's everything, you know, Nicole and Autumn meet with them and they say, here's what's happening here. What we're doing. Okay. Perfect. You know, here's uh we approve that and you're good to go. And so it's, it's, yeah, we just basically hand it over to the employees and it just gives them, you know, like I said, something that's different with inside of the office, like, you know, call yeah. centers, it's just like, oh man, why would I want to work at a call center? It's like, well, I work at a call center that actually cares about me, people, my mm -hmm. life, and other things like that, and my health. And, you know, so like I said, there are things that don't distract from, you know, the work that we have to do, but at the same time, it, it gives them something to help improve their life or, mm -hmm. you know, their, you know, just different things like that. And they don't have to be part of it. If they want to just come to work and then go home and, mm -hmm. you know, not, not care about it. Cool. No worries. Like, and some of them just, do that. Some of them, you know, like, you know, we've had those conversations. Some people, they, they just, they don't care for whatever reason. And that's cool. That's their thing. But for the ones that do it's well, they care and you're, you're paying attention to a thing that they care about. That's very yeah. impactful. I imagine. Right. Yep. Yep. So what's that, exactly. what's that boil down to? Like, you know, you, you do a lot of stuff. You spend a lot of time, you spend a lot of money, you know, on things like this for the business owner. So let's, let's be real selfish for a minute because we know there's some altruistic stuff. I, I know that with you. I know that, you know, you do want to just make a positive difference in the lives of the people around you. And you didn't just start a charity. You started a business, you know, something to make money. So how does, you know, this focus on culture impact you at the end of the day, you know, aside from saying, well, I make more money, you know, like how, how does it impact Jill's office specifically? 
Well, you know, you hear about people having so many employee problems, right? Mm -hmm. At Jill's office, like we start people every two weeks. We can hire people. We're like people come in and the people who who catch the vision of what they're trying to stay, like they stay and they mm -hmm. grow with inside the company. Um, and like we have our turnover after we've really done a lot of this stuff has dropped by 50%. Wow. Yeah. And okay. so our, our turnover, our, our traditional call center turnover is above a hundred percent. Um, you know, it's about 150%. Wow. And our turnover at Jill's office is right around 47%. Holy uh, crap. So you're, you're on, in a different stratus. I mean, that's not just a, like, I would imagine if average is 150, like companies that are at, at 120 are probably shining stars, right? I mean, is that kind of how that, those numbers yeah. would work? So if you're at, if you're at 50, you really are like a unicorn over here, uh, which clearly has to be, unless you're paying people 10 times what they're making at other call centers, that has to be a, no. a direct correlation between that culture, that connection that you have with your people. Yeah. I mean, we pay 15 bucks an hour. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's where we start out here and you have the opportunity for raises. Most of our employees are making between 15 and $21 an hour. Most mm -hmm. of our call center employees, which sounds very expensive, but that's the traditional wage going around here for, for call yeah. center, you know, and so it's expensive. We don't outsource. That's why, you know, Jill's office is more expensive than traditional call centers that outsource just because we're hundred percent us based, but that's, mm -hmm we focus on here's and the I, thing guys jill's office is just like sushi it's high quality it's really really good it just ain't for everybody it's only for the people that are willing to pay for a great experience in their business there's exactly. the doll there's the dollar store call center too and, and you're more than welcome to go use them but for the guys that love the quality jill's office so that, sorry that's my sales pitch <laughs> that's my uh, that's my i'm trying to get the people not using you <laughs> um, so yeah yeah you know, and so that's, it's, it's important nowadays to really focus on your turnover. Um, and, you know, doing these things, it sounds like, well, that's stupid. It won't work in my business. Mm -hmm. Guess what? Like, I bet you your employees are seeing something and saying, like, looking around and being like, I wish I had something like that. Like, even though you're do pressure washing and you have three people, mm -hmm. talk to your three people about, you know, what you, what you can do, because guess what you can do gym memberships i started three years ago because it cost 15 bucks a month to have a gym membership per mm -hmm. employee and i'm like the, i can afford that yeah. and you know and that got them access to all these gyms and all this stuff and i make them go to the gym you know three times a month to have that active so it's not like mm -hmm. i'm paying for something they're not using yeah. i can actually check that and i cancel gym memberships if they don't use it you know i love and that <laughs> that's excellent talk to them what they want because then they're going to feel that and you're going to be like okay like let's try some things like that it, it does make a difference so brant let's let's rewind and let's say that you're uh, a little bitty company so a lot of my listeners are aspiring entrepreneurs or they're entrepreneurs that you know say like in my industry that what we would call quote on the truck you know they're still out doing the work and stuff like that so they might have one they might have two employees or something like that yeah and first off some of those guys are listening and some of those gals are listening right now saying, well, I mean, I can't have company culture. It's just a small little company. So guys, I won't even make Brant do this one. That's a bunch of BS. Yeah, absolutely can. And as a matter of fact, that attitude is a part of your current company culture. But um, yeah. so I'm going to throw out a couple of things because I'm a smaller company, you know, definitely compared to you. And I want to throw out a couple of just little um, things that we do, but I, I want to hear some of your thoughts. And I'm going to go first because I didn't ask you to do this. I want to give you a second to, to you know, think if you needed a second here. But okay. guys, I'm, I'm going to tell you, um, I've referenced this before on the show, but I remember a study. Uh, I don't know the name of the dang study and who knows how long ago it was made. It was a long freaking time ago. But, um, they, you know, and I've heard a lot of people talk about it and heard it on podcasts and so on and so forth where you know, they say that money is not the main, and it's actually not in the top five driving factors for job satisfaction or job fulfillment for employees. Now, it doesn't mean that money's not important. It doesn't mean that we don't have to pay people you know, a, a, a fair wage. It just means that that's not one of the top five factors that people use to determine if they love their job, if their job's fulfilling and so on and so forth. And 
I actually don't even know all five, to be honest with you, Brand. I'm just going off my memory from back when I was in the corporate world and getting this training myself. But two of the top five, and I don't even know if they're one and two, they could be four and five for all I know. But two of the top five is feeling appreciated and feeling empowered make a difference. And like Brant, you were talking about that, like with the committees and things, you know, people, you know, feeling empowered to make that difference. And if you're a small business, you know, if you're, if you got one guy with you, and I would even argue if you have no guys with you, you might not even be looking at yourself the right way. You might not even be empowering yourself enough or appreciating yourself enough. Uh, go to mental health, uh, uh, <laughs> betterhelp.com in case you, you're like that. But um, <laughs> I'm, I'm saying that tongue in cheek, but, but you got to love yourself, folks. But, um, but doing those two things at my business have been huge. And you might say, well, Bob, what is doing those two things? You know, a lot of it's just words. A lot of it is just words. So how, how, what have I done to build a culture that says my people feel appreciated and my people feel empowered? Well, I've done two things. Uh, Appreciation is easy. One, you can tell people that you appreciate them. And that's, that goes a long way for a lot of people. You can also show them you appreciate them. You can show them you appreciate them by dropping off a Coke or a Gatorade or a cold water on a job site when you didn't have any other reason to be there. You could show them that you appreciate them by doing all kinds of little things like that. Um, but here's another way. You can show them that you appreciate them by doing things for them that have nothing to do with work. You know, if you heard through the grapevine that they're moving this weekend and they got to move on Saturday, you don't tell them on Monday you're going to help them move. Uh-oh, can you hear me, Brant? I think my audio is cutting out. Did it? Are you good? Yep. Okay. But you don't tell them on Monday. You wait till Friday afternoon and say, hey, by the way, I cleared my schedule tomorrow. I'm going to go help you move. Hmm. Now, all of a sudden, they know that you're not full of crap when you're saying, hey, we're a family. We're different here. Are we different here or do we check out at five and, and, and you know, we're not connected? You know, so those are some the types of things. Just be engaged. And then last. And I do this right from the out, outset is when I interview people, I literally tell them, like, we've got a couple of goals with our employees and it's either to get them to be so great that they help this company grow and they can move up within it and make a lot of money and have a lot of fun while we're doing it. Or my goal is to help you leave my company, not out of anger, not out of, I want you gone uh, for any reason other than you've got dreams and goals. And I don't want to hire somebody that wants to be a pressure washer for the rest of their life. I want to hire someone that wants to be better. So, you know, so John Doe, Jane Doe, if that's you, we're the company, we're literally going to help you start a business somewhere. I'll even coach you to help you start a business somewhere. I'll help you get the education, whatever you got to do to go get the career that you want. But we want to help you leave our business. Well, let me tell you what's happened with that, Brent, is not only, you know, and I've had my own employee issues, but just those little things right there, I've gained a partner, a literal a business partner out of it. Um, right. I've gained um, three uh, great employees that gave me over six month notices. That's amazing. Six. One of them was nine months. One of them said, I'm, I'm leaving in nine months. Uh, two of them were close to nine. And then one was at six. So those are the things, you know, just little stuff, guys. I'm not doing anything that significant. Well, that you know what? I think that's au contraire. I think I'm doing some things that are very significant that we just lose sight of or we just don't give enough credibility to, which is make them feel appreciated and then make them feel empowered. I didn't mention this, but here's one little freebie. Stole this from Michael Dalkey. All right. I tell people you can make any decision in the company you want if it's good for our PL, if it's good for our employees, and if it's good for our customers. If you can say yes to all three of those things, you don't even have to ask. You make the decision and then you come to me and just let me know what decision you made. And if I think it was the wrong decision, you don't even get a slap on the wrist. You just get a, hey, here's the way we should handle that the next time it comes up. And then we all learned and we all moved forward. So those are a couple of things that I've done, Brent that are essentially free minus a Coke or a, you know, a lunch or something here and there that have had huge impacts on my business. Um, do you have advice for people that have the small company that don't have a bunch of resources to do the things that you're doing now that, that, that they could use to impact their uh, company culture? Yeah. And I think you said uh, quite a bit of them, but I think one thing that I want to add to them is making sure you have one-on-ones uh, with your employees and yes. you're like, what's a one-on-one? It's where you set aside time to just be one-on-one -on -one with those employees and just talk to them about how's your job doing? How are you doing? What can I do to help you? Mm -hmm. And it's all about them 
and then at that time, if you need to set, you know, performance, you know, say, Hey, you know what? I really want to try to get you to here. Can we do here? You know, setting goals with them uh, and really helping them achieve. I think that's, that's a great thing along with all of those things that are free, but that help them feel empowered to grow. Um, oh, and- Brent, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just want to share with you. I'm, I'm just geeking out with you right now. This isn't even podcast stuff. I just got to share some stuff with you, man. Is it, Brent, you're one of my heroes, dude. Like, just, I, I want to, sh- I want you to be proud of me. <laughs> to be honest with you. So I just got to share this uh, with peg, piggybacking on what you just said. Um, you know, one thing we're changing uh, at our business where we've completely changed the way we look at it. And actually the first official one that's being done like this is actually tomorrow. And uh, my GM actually asked me if I'd be a part of it. So I'm excited. I'm going to get to be a part of it too. But um, like quarterly reviews, you know, um, now that's something that we haven't been disciplined on in our business. I, I did there for a little while and then I fell off the wagon on a bunch of stuff. And that was one of them. But uh, Jahira, you guys have heard me talk about her, Jay, she's actually going to be on the show and it's going to be freaking awesome because she gives me more shit than I give anyone. So you guys, if you, if you want to see, you know, someone that works for me, give me hell, listen to that episode. But um, she, um, when we do our 90 day reviews now, we're not going to, we're not reviewing the employees anymore, you know, because we've established if an employee finds out how they're doing at a 90 day review, we're really failing as a leadership team, you know, because an employee should really know how they're performing all the time, you know, uh, and brand, I don't know if you guys do the traction thing and EOS, I think you might, but if you don't, you probably do some similar stuff, like just like with the numbers that everyone's responsible for people know how much revenue they should produce or they should, right. People know how many calls they should take. People know how many go backs they're allowed to have, you know, whatever. So that's, those are things we need to be managing on the daily or the weekly, right. You know, stuff like that. So, um, it's kind of like if there's a disciplinary disciplinary issue at work, if you deal with it two or three weeks later, you really miss the boat anyway. You need to to deal with it now so that the emotions and the intellect are all there and there's a teaching experience and you move on. So what we've said is if someone's finding out how they're doing in a 90-day interview, we we already failed as a leadership team. They have to know. Now we might give them the report card, you know, the nine week or the the semester report card saying, here's the official grade, but you already knew what it was. Congratulations, smiley face. What we've now said is this is a 90 day review of the company. So we're going to bring you in. Um, we want you to, to review us. And this is another thing in our culture we've done a good job of is allow people to give feedback, even negative feedback or criticism, because we actually take action on it and do stuff with it. And then we allow them to give us that feedback. And then the second part, so that's the 90 day review is them reviewing the business, the leadership team. And then the second part is we're going to be setting just like in traction, you know, it might be called rocks, or if you've read the 12 week year, it might just be a a quarterly success criteria or whatever you want to use, but we're going to have them set, you know, a personal and a, and a professional goal that they want to achieve over the next quarter. And just like the things with you, Brant, they don't have to participate. That's really not true. (laughs) We've determined, I, 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 you know, I'm speaking, you know, out of my butt. We've determined that we don't want employees that aren't willing to improve themselves, you know, that no. don't want to be better. So they don't have to tell us what the goals are. But one of our core values is people that care about our vision. And our vision, a part of our company vision is we want people to get better and get what they want. In life. So you can't do that if you're not constantly trying to improve and achieve new things. So, so we want them to set a, a personal goal and a business goal. They don't have to tell us what they are on the personal side. And then we just want to help empower them to achieve those things and be their cheerleader. And, you know, you can't do it for them, but you can, you can drop the rope down into the pit. You can, you know, cheer them on. You can do whatever it is, lead them to the water. We just want them to drink and better themselves. So that's one thing we're doing on that quarterly thing that I I just needed to share with Brant because I knew you'd be proud of me on that one. (laughs) Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's amazing. And I think, you know, exactly just doing that, you know, letting employees know where they're at is so important. Um, and I'm so glad you're doing that because that's what that's helped us here. We we send out monthly emails from your manager um, and then you have a, you know, bi-monthly one-on-one with your manager, like for the Jills. Um, mm-hmm. I have monthly one-on-one with my department heads um, and our, you know, kind of more of the higher up, you know, and the Jills also have more monthlies where the Jills have more, you know, bi-monthly, but they have emails and this and that, and they talk about their goals and what they want to achieve and, you know, so that we do that on a, on a bi-monthly basis, just because things change so much. 
um, you know, and what, what, you know, what training are you getting right now? What training's next? And this, and it, it just changes the employees' minds to know that I'm in a place that cares about where the, themselves, but then also cares about the business. And they feel like the business is organized and that they're going to, that they have the chance to grow with inside something, right? Even if it's just two people inside of a, of a business mm-hmm. or it's just you, you're, you can grow. Yeah. Like you can be, you just need to dream. Mm-hmm. Right. And, you know, as a business owner, one of the, my, my favorite quote is that, um, that I have is, um, the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. Um, the future belongs to those that believe in the beauty of their dreams. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. And so it's just like, if you got two people, you can dream big because you, then you can do it and you can help your employees. Even if you got one employee, you can be become something so amazing. Just believe in your dreams, believe in yourself and know you can do these things um, with your employees, have that company culture, and you're going to be able to grow a business. Even if you have competitors around you, if by doing these things, you're going to have a better employee, you're going to have a better business mm. and you're going to be stronger um, and people will notice. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Uh, so Brant, let's, uh, what, what kind of, I mean, let's just stay on the, the subject here for a minute. We're just talking about employees. Do you yeah. do an employee of the month type of thing or? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Employee of the month. Um, you know, so employee of the month is, uh, we send it out to all of our employees and they get a, you know, recommend who they think the employee of the month is. And, you know, then they get like a little, uh, you know, printout signed by me and they get some automate motivate points and, you know, we're cool. get their picture on that. We're getting a little plaque with little pictures so we can, you know, like they have at, you know, it's different places. And so we're getting that. So employee of the month and, and yeah, there's just, there's so many things that you can do for free. Just got to do it. Yeah. I want to, this is, you know what? I, I got to stop apologizing. It's my damn show, man. We're going to talk about whatever I want. I'll interrupt when I want to interrupt. Um, <laughs> Brant, I, I, here in a second, you mentioned automate, motivate earlier. And you just mentioned it again. And I actually, don't let me forget. I just wrote that down. I want to circle back to that, but I'll tell you something fun we did on our, uh, on our uh, employee of the month thing. I, did, I, I made, did I tell you about the golden blanket thing? Oh yeah, remember. you did. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll just fill in the listeners real quick just so they know, but you know, we're, we, uh, we're currently going through the book traction, you know, we're rolling out EOS for anyone that knows what that is. If you don't, if you got a home service, but well, any kind of business, you need to read the book, uh, traction by Gino Wickman. It, uh, it's essentially a guidebook on how to systemize your company, you know, how to, to get a grip and track on everything. So we're, we're working through it. It's been phenomenal for us, but anyway, one thing that we, uh, we've done through that process is we've determined what our passion and our business is. So like it'll say, determine your passion, your purpose, or your uh, cause, right? Or, or other places would call it your mission statement or your whatever statement, right? Your yep. purpose statement. So we came down to this with ours, which uh, Michelle spoke, she speaks on this quite a bit. You know, people don't uh, remember what you did for them. They only remember how you made them feel. You know, you're Michelle over there at Jill's. Um, and we took that philosophy. People don't, you know, people don't care what we did for them. They're not going to remember what we did, but they will remember their ex- emotional experience they had with us. And this is another one of those talks we have in our interview process. And we say, so we're not just looking for a dude that can pressure wash or a dude that can sell stuff. We're looking for, for a dude or a chick that can interact with that customer. And when they leave, the customer feels like we wrapped a warm, fuzzy blanket around them. Now I stole this all from Michael Kaplan. He's the one that that talked about the fuzzy blanket, but I've loved it. I heard Latimer talk about that on his podcast when Kaplan was on it probably five years ago. Uh, I'm buddies with Kaplan. I've talked to him about it. So we finally said our passion at TRT home services is a fuzzy blanket experience. And what I love about it is when you tell people, they're like, what the heck is that? Well, I just explained it. You know what that is. That's our passion is to make our people feel. It's essentially the same as yours, uh, mm-hmm. Brant. You're, you just called it the wow experience and we called it the fuzzy blanket. So now instead of our our uh, <laughs> employee of the month, name to be changed potentially, but we, we're kind of weird at my company. So we, we're calling it the order of the golden blanket. Okay, so the order of the golden blanket and essentially the 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 person that, that exemplifies, if that's a word, our core values the most that month. They win the Golden Blanket Award, 
And at the next company meeting, they get to the front and I had 72 hour print make this God. Now they did a ph phenomenal job. I wanted it to be gaudy and just over the top, you know? <laughs> yeah. So this big giant blanket and uh, I don't have the blanket yet. We've had to do it without the blanket the last time, but we got this big blanket that's coming. And then uh, they, they get up to the front of the, the room. They kneel down. I put a, a King's crown on their head unite them with a pressure washing wand we lay the blanket over them you know everyone you know claps for them and they helped provide that fuzzy blanket experience that month and then they get a little cheddar cheese for you know being awesome and and yeah. all that good stuff and and then we take their photo and and we're going to create a, a wall of fame you know the bl the golden blanket or the, the order of the golden blanket and that'll be all the past winners and a lot of fun a lot of a lot of fun stuff we're, we're that's doing amazing so. that is a great idea <laughs> yes. i love it so Brant, um, I think we fixed everybody's employee problems, right? I mean, do you, before we, before I awkwardly segue, I mean, do you have any other things that you want to drop on that? Or, cause if not, I want to start talking about the journey that you've been on here. No, I, you know what? Everyone's got to find their own path and their own way at their own business. Mm -hmm. Just got to start. That's so that's right. Start. Yeah. So let's get back. So now let's rewind. Yeah. All right. We're, we're back. You, you're having that conversation. I think, I think you said it was with your brother or maybe your brother-in-law or something like that. And it's like, if, if they want my business bad enough, they'll call me. And, um, yeah. and I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah. What, it, does he still have that business? Oh, don't answer it. Just in case he doesn't, uh, if he does, you can answer if he doesn't don't answer. But anyway, um, <laughs> uh, you started the business, you know, uh, sounds like maybe your dad may have invested with you or something like that. You guys got that thing going. And that was back in 2012, I think you said, or 13, right? Uh, yeah, it was in 2013 when I had yeah. the idea. Yeah. Okay. And so what happens? Let's start talking about the journey. So I don't want to know how it was. I just want to know how flawlessly effortless it was. It was, it was <laughs> clearly easy. Let's talk about that. So you have the big idea. Yeah. And what happened? How the heck did you get to 100 and you know, 50 almost employees and, and all the great things you're doing now? Yeah. So I just, from there, I just basically went to my dad and pitched the idea of Jill's office who, you know, he just saw, sold his software company and he's like, mm, okay, let's do it. <laughs> you know? So he's like, come up with a business plan and present it to me in, in the right way. So, you know, over the next couple of months, I, you know, wrote up a business plan, put the ideas together and what Jill's office is now is definitely not, was not in my original business plan, you know, and all these things. So I presented to him, he's like, okay, let's, you know, let's, uh, let's see if we can do this. And so, you know, he invested in it and we went and found a, you know, programming firm and, you know, we started programming. It took, you know, a couple months and, uh, you know, so in 2015, uh, we officially launched on March 2nd. Uh, you know, we had, we had four beta customers and four employees, you know, working every four hours, um, they'd switch off and, you know, we just basically, you know, started taking calls, you know, from there and and where was this at did, I, you may have said it i i i'd zone out too many times is this in your house did you have a location what, what no, was we really got this little office okay in good old syracuse utah you know and uh so we had like one we got one little office and another little office we're gonna put like four desks on you know different walls and um you know we we just started from there and you know just slowly started to try to figure out who we were you know, yeah. we didn't understand who we were, what we were doing. You know, there was no, there's other call centers in there, but we're like, we're not a call center. So it's just like, what are we? And yeah. we what really, are you, Brant? I don't even yeah. know. What are you? You're not you the know, call center. Yeah. We're just, we're just really awesome external receptionists. <laughs> you know? So, you know, over time, we just kind of, we just experimented, you know, we really didn't take on new clients for, you know, probably four or five months mm -hmm. just because we were trying to really just get our software in line and really figure out what we're doing. You know, back in the day we had our own like invoicing and estimating app with inside of this. Cause that's, Oh really? Cool. Yeah. We had all that, but it was just kind of weird. And we were just like, okay, do we do this? Do we not do this? You know, we spent a whole crap ton of money on it. So, mm -hmm. you know, well, we kind of ran with it for a little bit and it's just like, you know what, let's, uh, not all people were using it. So it's like, okay, we'll drop that focus more on the call center. Like I said, we just kind of figure out who we were and, you know, and then finally, you know, this marketer, you know, found us and 
then he's like, okay, this is a new place. And we were priced way too low. Yeah. Um, is this a know. marketer that I know by chance? No, no, oh, okay. no not even in the, yeah. You know, we were charging 75 cents per call back mm-hmm. then. Like, you know, I'm like, yeah, we're going to make tons of money on this. And every marketer's like, well, that's so cheap. So <laughs> I ended up a crap ton of marketers and we weren't making any money. Um, mm-hmm. And so then it's just like, okay, we need to figure out how to actually make this a business. Um, and, you know, over the next, you know, we just kept putting money into it and money into it, and money into it. And it took us, we weren't profitable until 2019. Wow. And wow. so, yeah, we put up, you know, people tell me, oh, it's easy to start a call center. You know, oh, this is, this is easy. I'm going to go do it. And I'm like, if you do want to start a call center, be my guest. Yeah. I'll help you. My friend, here's the, <laughs> go do this. You know, uh, <laughs> just make sure you got a blank check. Yeah. You know, And cause I can't tell you how in debt I am, but I'm in debt. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. and it's just like, it's a big trial and error. Yeah. And that's what it was. I mean, and then, you know, the hard thing is, is in 2019, um, you know, my dad was just like, okay, I funded you what I can. And mm-hmm. so we lost all of our funding and it's just like, okay, I got to figure out how to do this on my own. And, you know, there was some points there where I'm like, Jill's office is not going to make it. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know how I'm going to make payroll. I don't know how. I'm going to pay the programmers. I don't know what I'm going to do, you know, and you just kind of put on a smiling face to all your employees, but a lot mm-hmm. of those nights like crap. What's what's the closest you got, Brand? If, if you don't mind sharing, I, I, I'll tell you me, I've went to bed praying to God that the stuff that was supposed to hit the account tomorrow hit so I could make payroll. Have you been that close before? Oh, there was, okay, this is really bad. I'm going to tell you the worst it's been. Okay. I had to write hot checks for my payroll. Oh, wow. Cause I had one, I had a way I had basically, I didn't have any money in the account, but I had money coming in the account the next day and I couldn't do it. So I had to write checks out for all the employees saying like, okay, if they put it in right now, it won't hit till the account tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I just pray that no, not everyone goes and gets in cash. <laughs> like, you know, that yeah. was, that was, that was, those were scary times. You know, I'm like, how did I do payroll with no money in the account? You but, know, I'll tell you, I, you know, just for those listening, guys, I mean, this is business, you know, now don't get me wrong. I'm not saying people can't start and just kick ass from day one. I'm sure that happens. They're just not the the typical one. But, you know, I can thank you two different times. Now, there was only three of us. There was me and Caleb and, and our first employee, Ron, back in the day. And Ron, thank you for being a great sport about this. But there was twice where I had to say, hey, guys, you know, we're supposed to be get paid on Friday. It ain't happening until Saturday. And, uh, you know, where I've had to literally push off payroll, um, an entire day. And those are not fun. Um, those are not fun entrepreneur days, even when it's just three of us doing that stuff, yeah. you know, and it, it's true. Like, I can't tell you, like if this the sleepless nights for like a year and a half, mm-hmm. you know, and just the pain, like, I, this is just like, I don't know how we're going to do this, but you know, you just, you're on your knees praying. You know, you just go to work and you grind Mm -hmm. and you just, you, sometimes you just got to go to work and you got to grow and, you know, people feel like, you know, I I, I can't do this anymore. I can't number one, have faith in yourself for one thing. And number two, you know what? Hard work does pay off, you know, and just believe in yourself and go to work. Mm -hmm. You can make the money and, you know, is you know now that we're bigger and everything is is life better no by any means sometimes this is like my payroll is like what it is you know on a buy you know my first payroll of the month is like how much i made the first year yeah you know (laughs) so it's just like holy crap like you know just because you're bigger doesn't mean life's easier it's just you gotta gotta go to work and you gotta believe yourself yeah i was just having that talk with uh gosh i can't I've got a couple of guys I'm doing a little bit of you know coaching with on stuff. And I can't remember uh, which one I was talking to. Uh, I was talking to someone. How, how about that? I was talking to someone just in the last couple of days. And uh, you know, Mike Dalkey, I think, right? Don't you? I, um, you know, I, I've never met him in person. I oh, want okay. to. You know but... of him, of course, because yeah, yeah. you're in the circles. I know. Okay. You know, Mike's, a, he, for those that don't know him, he's, he's just 
He's the rain man of home service industry. And I hope Mike hears that. That's uh, <laughs> we called him that on the podcast one time and he, uh, cause he's good with numbers. And he called me the next day cause he was on the treadmill listening. He's like, the effing rain man what are you talking about you know he didn't think it was a compliment but uh <laughs> it was a backhanded compliment Mike. love you um just not very much um <laughs> Dalkey, you know uh, gosh what were we talking about brand i just sidetracked myself i wanted to mention Dalk. oh uh the businesses and scaling you know he started out investing like in small businesses like mine right you know little bitty you know baby companies and and now they're investing uh, i'm not going to share numbers but let's just say stuff that I'm not even on that radar, you know, they're doing some big moves and some big things. And, and, um, you know, their portions of investments are way bigger than my entire company's worth, you know, type of thing when they're buying small companies. So point being him and his other partner might do some big things. And he said, the one thing that has actually kind of blown him away is he expected as he stopped doing more stuff, like in the home service industry, and started doing things with like, say, more professional, you know, regulated industries, and also at just bigger companies, he's like, surely there's going to be different types of issues. And he's like, there's not, it's yeah. all the same. It's just the, the only difference is, uh, there might be an extra zero on the problem. But other than that, there's no difference on anything. People are still having their personal crises, you know, every how often they have them. Um, you know, the ex-spouse is still doing the ex-spouse stuff. However, often customers are still, you know, how customers can be, you know, it doesn't matter how big we are. And it's funny to hear you say the same thing. It's just like life is life is life. You know, business is business is business. Sure. Tactically and strategically, some things are going to change, but if we don't treat our business as a, uh, if we're not being the big boys today, we're not going to be able to be those big boys tomorrow because things really aren't changing, you know, so we can't say I'll build the culture as an example in the context of this conversation when I'm big, yeah. that's not how it works. You're building the culture now and that's yeah. going to help determine if you get big. So yeah. I don't even know my point other than you're, you're just re you're just confirming things I've heard from other people and, and my own experiences and working in the corporate world, what have yeah. you. But, so Brant, uh you wrote, wrote hot checks for uh for payroll good news is jills that was only three weeks ago so we're all safe <laughs> don't worry <laughs> do they get to listen to this are they going to know about this show i kind of hope so i just i just need them to know that i am the reigning jills office office champion for trivia that's all i need them to put in our slack channel you know okay all right yeah. perfect um so brant what would be something if you could look back on you know, you're going to have other things that you're going to be more proud of in the future. But right now, you get to look back on your Jill's office journey to the best of your ability, because you may not be able to think of the best one. But what's yeah. one of the most proud thing? Or what's one of the things that you and your team have accomplished that you're most proud of? No rules. It can be finances. It can be culture. It can be intangible. I don't know. Well, what's one of the things you're most proud of that you've accomplished with your team in this entrepreneurial journey? Okay, I'm gonna tell you two things because I can, right? There's no rules. <laughs> when I go back and you're I dang talk- right. Sorry, I was drinking there, but you're right. There's no rules, baby. Let's do this. Number one, I'm grateful. Going back to that experience of like doing payroll with no money. I'm grateful that I did that. And number one, I and my team, my, 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 my leaders of my company actually knew not, they didn't know I wrote those checks, but <laughs> the financial strain we were in and they didn't leave me because I gave them the vision of what we could become. Mm. Um, and they're still here today. All of my department heads um, that helped me run the company, they've been with me through thick and thin through having no money to where, you know, we have the ability to do some awesome things that we're trying to do right now with, you know, what we're doing. And, you know, it's just, I, I'm grateful that, that I have a team that trusted me and the vision that I had enough to stay mm. um, when I had nothing. Um, because now as we, as we're growing our team now to, you know, what we're, what we're going to do this year and, you know, the amazing things that we're doing, like, they trusted me. And mm -hmm. that is probably one of the greatest things that I can say that I have is my team. Um, because they understood and they stayed 
and they did amazing things and they worked really hard, you know. And can, I, can I ask you a question just for some clarity on this? Just to, I want to make sure I'm hearing you well, because uh, I think this is what you're saying. And I think this is spot on. Are you essentially saying I'm proud of the leader that I am and have become because that allowed your team to follow you? I know you're trying to be humble here. Yeah, but you can still be humble in that. But that's what I'm hearing is you're proud of the leader that you've become because that allowed you to lead this team through some rough stuff into this phenomenal place that you are right now. I, I guess I'm proud of the experience I went through and that I learned. Gotcha. And that through that, like it made me a better leader, but then it also allowed me to trust my team and to listen to them and to let them do their thing. Gotcha. Uh, you know. So I, I'm just going to say this, Brent, I just think you're afraid to say it because you don't want to be arrogant, but you just confirmed, you just said, no, it's all of these great leadership characteristics that I, that I portrayed to help me get through it. I trusted my team. I empowered them. I led them through it and they're <coughs> still here. So I just want to make sure you get props because there's no question your team's amazing. I, I don't know if I've met all of the department heads, but I think I've talked to most of them a, a few different times and yeah. they're, they're knocking it out of the park. But attitude reflects leadership, Captain. One of my favorite quotes from one of my favorite movies. Well, I appreciate it. And I, you know, I, you know, I, I mentioned this recently, you know, one of my favorite, uh, you know, Vince Lombardi, right? The great football mm -hmm. coach He says, you know, to be a great football coach, you have to get smarter people to coach around you. And that's mm -hmm. what I've done, right? Yeah. I'm not smart. I'm stupid when it comes to this. I didn't even, I didn't graduate college. I don't have all these degrees. Mm -hmm. You know, I started a business instead. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, what I do, I went and got, people who are smarter than me in their areas to, to run the business that I just have these cool ideas and want to run. Yeah. And, you know, Steve jobs did, you know, that's why, you know, I don't know if you read his uh, autobiography or his biography, but you know, he talks about that, you know, that, that dude was very arrogant, but he said, yeah. you got to hire people smarter than you and get out of their stinking way. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, yeah, and that's what I did. That's what I do right now. You know, I just, I got a lot of cool people around me and, you know, sure if you want to call it leadership but it's like i give them a thumbs up good job guys you know so <laughs> well, here's, here's why it is leadership i'm sure you've heard this quote i think it was maxwell it could have been ziggler but i think it's maxwell that said if if you think you're leading people but no one's following you're just going for a walk well you're yeah. doing the opposite you're saying you ain't leading but bro they're following and yeah. uh you know and and i, I will, i'll give some additional credit where it's due autumn is amazing actually i she should have been on this stinking show with us but your wife autumn uh yeah, I, she reminds me a lot of my wife. Uh, I, you know, Melissa and Autumn, uh, I, I really do. I just, uh, in the most uh, wholesome, healthy way, I, I, I crush on Autumn. You know what I mean? She just, she, she just reminds me of a, a younger Melissa, and uh, they're, they're just great hearts and great people, and and you're you're a lucky man, and uh, Melissa is a lucky woman. So, um, <laughs> but the. You, you were talking about that earlier and I wanted, wanted to get, I actually wrote it down. I wrote down delegate and I wrote down right person, right seats. Cause early in the show you had said, you know, uh, well, I just hired people that were smarter than me and, and got out of the way, you know, it was eventually or essentially what you said. Yeah. And that, that really resonated with me. Cause I'm kind of, those are one of those things in my life where it's like, I've known them in my head, but I haven't really like got it. You know what I mean? I, I talked about it in another episode, the preacher will stand on stage and point at their head and say, they get it here. And then they'll point at their heart and say, well, they don't get it here. You know? And this is one of those things for me, that right person, the right seat. You know, I literally Brant, uh, what, three weeks ago, I don't know, let's call it a month. I don't know how long it's been. I, I stepped out of my company. I'm, I'm, I'm the CEO. I go there on Tuesdays and I have a leadership meeting and I have a one-on-one -on -one with, in my leadership team, but I stepped out because, you know, I've got the skills to run a home service business. I've got the, I've done it. You know, I've ran, I've made a lot of money running others and I've done a good job running mine, Yeah. but it's not what I want to do. And yeah. as a result, my performance suffers, you know, because after I'm in it longer, it's just like, I, it's just not my thing. It's not what I want to do. I want to do this stuff and I want to build people and build teams and, and so on and so forth. And I'm starting to do what, what you're doing, which is, you know, getting myself out of the wrong seat and putting my correct people in those correct seats. So I'm calling mine and your shot, Jahira. So for those of you listening, I'm looking right at the camera and pointing. So Jay's my GM. Bro, uh, she ain't a bro. Jay, we're going to do some amazing stuff together. And you're a big key to it because you're the smarter one than me in that seat. So, uh, Brant, thank you for being a... 
your influence along with people like Kurt. I've been watching you. I'm watching Kurt. Got a few other buddies in my mastermind where you guys, your businesses, uh, I'm talking about Kurt at Responsibid, your businesses are taking off and you guys are being phenomenal leaders. And I'm just trying to to copycat you guys and, and do those exact things. So I appreciate the, the great example that you're showing. Um, but yeah. right people, right seats. Sounds like you kind of did that kind of from the beginning. I mean, you know, um, did you learn those lessons the hard way at one point or were you just kind of lucky that that was built into your DNA? Yeah, I mean, uh, let's call both. Um, so by by nature, I'm not um, I'm not a person who like wants to be that take charge. It's my way or the highway. I'm very much a by group um, leadership style. Mm -hmm. And so you know, really, when you know the person who runs our 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 drills, her name is Jaden, and she's my very first employee. It's been me with me since day one, like really through the thick and thin, Jaden. Yeah. You know, and she knows more about Jill's office and how to answer a phone call and how to, you know, do everything in Jill's office, you know, more than me, because she's, you know, really in the trenches since day one. And, you know, it's just like, I, I saw, I saw what she had. And so I remember, you know, I went in to her as she was working and just like, sit down and talk to her for like, you know, we didn't getting tons of calls, you know, first couple of weeks of Jill's office, you know, even for the first couple of months. So we would just sit down and just talk and talk and dream and be like, Jaden, you know, this is my, this is what I have. This is my goal for you and my dream for you. And we talk about how we're going to grow this. And, you know, so it's just like, number one, like someone who can dream with me, like that's what I need. So I got Jaden right here. And then it's like, bam, we hire Michelle. And it's just like, Michelle comes in. She's like, oh, Hey, I'm the most amazing rock star person in the world. Like, you know, set me free. And it's like, okay. Like I could see it, you know? Mm -hmm. And then it's like, we hire Nicole and Nicole's like, Hey, like I'm, I'm the most amazing person in the world. I can sell <laughs> I can this. I'm the unicorn. I'm the culture person. It's just like, perfect. You know, then yep. we hire a pro and it's just like, that was all within the first year. So it's just like, number one, like I didn't let my ego get in front of me by saying I knew it was best. It's like, I saw them, I saw their talent and then I swept them up, put them in the right position, you know, um, and just let them go. Um, wow. and just, they come in and they, you know, what they counsel with me and they know my vision. They, I know their vision. I let them be entrepreneurs inside the mm -hmm. business Love it. and, you know, that's, you know, they have as much, you know, to do with what's happening at Jill's office, you know, just as much as me, because we all understand the vision they all have. They could say, I could come in and I say, guys, this is where I want to go with the business. And they all turn around and say, no, guess what? I'm okay to say okay, that's fine. Like, tell me why not I'll back off. And then, you know, they get their way because they all understand that. And I'm okay. Even as the leader, not having to be the, you know, yeah. the person who's on a chat, we, we run the, we run the business as a group. Yeah. Uh, and, and you really you know, do. You, I mean, like guys, he's not just saying this stuff. Like I I've seen how they do these things and you know, like we've changed our, it's not as cool looking as yours, but we've changed our conference room. We don't have a table in there anymore. We've just got like comfy chairs around because we, we are sharing ideas. We are discussing, and I'm not yeah. kidding. When I talk about me getting out of the business, Brant, you're a big influence on that because I've been watching how you let your team operate. And unfortunately my team confirmed this whenever I brought it to them because <laughs> I was like, guys, I think I'm holding you back. I think I'm a little too involved. And they were all like, yep. <laughs> I'm like, well, screw you guys. You suck, you know. But yeah. uh, but yeah, I, I as you're saying these things, I'm like beaming with pride. Uh I know you built the business and I know that the Jills are your team, but they're you know, some of these girls, I don't know them all, you know, but uh and and even dudes, you know, and Nick and and uh you know, some of the guys over there, but um I'm beaming with pride because I'm friends with these people that are amazing. And yeah. and the Jills that I don't know. I'm speaking about you too, because birds of a feather flock together. And the ones that I do know, uh, I just want you guys to know you're freaking awesome. I'm proud to be your friend. So I hope you feel that warm, fuzzy blanket wrapped around you. And then do me a favor. Just go give some hugs to the Jills that don't know me. So it's not that creepy that some weird middle-aged bald white dude is running <laughs> around a call center hugging people. But uh, yeah, Brant, you've done some phenomenal, phenomenal things. Um, 
so so here's what my my thoughts are i think we need to uh now now listeners hear me out this is going to be fun okay not going to be a hard pitch i want to pitch jill's office to like i don't know 10 listeners okay maybe five how about maybe i don't know anyone can sign up but i think you and i just frank this is just for fun I, i just think for the fun of it you know you don't need five new clients or whatever you know i mean you're doing good but let's let's do a thing where if they say all right um i want the brant and bobby special here's what they get they get the same great price and the same great service that jill's office gives to everyone and they'll get us a, a fun spirited self-deprecating video that brant and i made specifically for that person thanking them so i don't know maybe we'll put on some unitards and do the singles ladies dance on camera i don't know <laughs> maybe, maybe we'll just uh, uh i i don't know i i just brant i'm committing us to something i don't even know how to execute on this thing yet it's going to scare me but what do you say the first five j and e listeners that mention this podcast and sign up with with jill's office we're going to do a public video that will definitely require us to be embarrassed thanking them for joining and then we'll post it publicly tag them and have some fun with that is, is that fair let's do it all right we're gonna do that so so if they need this service if they need to someone to help them with the calls and guys like i said at the beginning it's beautiful if you're a small company it can take all the calls for you because you're the dude on the ladder and you don't need to be answering calls while you're on the ladder. And if you're a larger, you know, middle size or larger company, maybe you only use them whenever you uh, need overflow, or maybe it's just night calls that you want them to take. Um, or if you're a really big business and you almost always have coverage, but those few times, you know, uh, you know, the, the six to 12 times a year when your whole team's in one meeting, they can be the people handling that stuff for you. So they have all of these options, all of these things. And guess what? I know a thing or two. They even got more stuff coming. We just can't tell you about it yet. But um, but they can grow with you. They can serve you. They're, they're very uh, detailed and specified on how they serve your business. Grant, how would they find this service? How, where do they go and find about it? Jillsoffice.com. You know, yeah. you can sign up right there. Um, or if you call in, and talk to someone and say, hey, you heard us on the podcast. I'll give you our show special, which gives you a weekly discount and it gets you a, a huge credit off on oh. uh sign up fee. So well, I wasn't a- even gonna give them a special. I was saying they get the same great rates and the same great service. They just get a cool video. So now they get a special too. So that's cool. they, oh, yeah. they heard us on the podcast. Check us out. Now I'm gonna say this, right? You're gonna be like, man, these guys are gonna solve all my problems. <laughs> We're here to help you you know, and mm-hmm. be successful. We're not going to solve all your problems, but we're going to help you be more successful. I love it. You know, we're human. We're here, but we're going to make you more money in the long run. It's going to yep. be awesome. Good stuff. So jillsoffice.com guys, go check them out. And I, I'm just going to say this, j and I'm going to be disappointed in you if I don't have to make some of these self-deprecating videos, because what the heck are we here for if, if we ain't making things happen? So that's right. Go check them out, put on here. I don't know. What, what do we got to say? Uh, this how about this you just got to say on on the on your thing you know uh make bobby and brant dance how's that something like that and we may not dance but we but we may we'll do it you whatever they got to say they'll say it they'll know it gets back to us in the first five people we'll we'll, uh, get the most amazing video in the world it's gonna be awesome that's right (laughs) all right brant i love you my friend uh thank you so much for doing this with me do you have any final thoughts you want to share before we get out of here you know what? I'm going to just share one more thought. You know, as a business owner, you know, you start a business to, you know, better your family's life, better your life, you know, and, but, you know, you get running it, you, you do all these amazing things and, you know, sure enough, you're running, you're working 80 hours a week. Um, I just want to, you know, I, I've been ta- talking to a lot of business owners lately and it's just like, you're, you're worried about everything going on, but at the same time, make sure you're spending time with your family, take some time off. I make sure to that once a month, that I do like, I, I call it a vacation time and it's not me going on vacation. It's either like a staycation or this, but my kids know that I'm there for them. My wife knows I'm there for her. We're, you know, we're going somewhere where, you know, and I that doesn't mean like going on, on an airplane and going somewhere. That means like I've taken her on a date. We're going to go camp overnight. We're going to do something, but spend time with your family. Use the opportunity that you have of being a business owner to have the, to work your own schedule. Love it. To, do the things you need to do, but then be there for your family. I think, you know, a lot of times we forget that and, mm-hmm. you know, that's, what's most important. That's why we started a business to better our family. So let's be there for our family. 
I love it, man. I, I'll tell you I, one little victory on that brand. I'll just tag on is, you know, because uh, we got a couple of family businesses. We got the the home service business that's, that, you know, was the pressure washing company. And then we got a maid service as well. And my daughter and my wife run that. And my wife, which you know real well, Brant, um, she's like, you probably love her too, because they are. I think her and Autumn are a lot alike. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, Melissa, she's been feeling it. You know, she's she just got done taking care of her husband who went through, you know, some month long, months long depression stuff. And she carried that burden and, and um, you know, and business is business and business is tough. And she's been feeling it. And my daughter picked up the slack, gave my wife the week off and said, you ain't talking work, you ain't answering calls, you ain't taking messages, you're just going to have a week off and fun. My daughter's doing the heavy lifting and my wife right before you and I started recording walked out the front door and she went to uh, I think it's Blizzard Beach, one of the Disney um, water parks over here just to relax and she's by herself and having a good day, because it is important to recharge. Uh, sometimes mm -hmm. by yourself, and then oftentimes, you know, uh, with, with the family as well. So Grant, mm -hmm. you're freaking awesome. I love you, bro. Thank you for being here and members are members, listeners, viewers love you too. And don't forget if you're not doing the things that you want to do in life, you better have a damn good reason for it. But if you're not pursuing those things, there's no good reason for it. Peace out.